This is the Youth Bible with Nicky and Pippa Gumbel, day 74. A lot of people don't realise this, but you can actually be joyful in the midst of hardship. Bad things happen to us all, but it's how we respond to the bad things that determines whether we'll experience true joy or not. A lot of times people will turn away from God when they face challenges because they think he's somehow punishing them. But God never puts more on you than you can bear. And that's why he gave you his strength. In our Bible passages for today, we see that if you keep pressing forward with faith and trust in God and his promises for your life, even when things seem bad, there is uh, no way that anything can take God's favor away from you. In my first year at university, aged 18, I read the entire New Testament in a week, from Matthew to Revelation, and became convinced, it's true! But I was reluctant to follow Jesus, so I thought my life would be very dull, and that I'd have to give up all enjoyment. In fact, it was the exact opposite. I found something even better than happiness. We all want to live happy lives. Happiness, wrote Aristotle, is the meaning and purpose of life, the whole aim and end of human existence. But there is something even better, greater, and deeper than happiness. Happiness is dependent on what happens, our circumstances. Joy is far deeper and not so dependent on our outward circumstances. It's a blessing from God. Joy is the characteristic of an encounter with Jesus, even in his mother's womb. Today's New Testament passage uses a Greek word which we translate blessed. It means to be the privileged recipient of God's favor and to be fortunate and happy because of it. The Amplified Bible described it as being happy, to be envied and spiritually prosperous with life joy and satisfaction in God's favor and salvation, regardless of their outward conditions. From Psalm 34 Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. The lions may grow weak and hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Praise God for all his favor. In the last 35 years, Pepper and I have traveled all over the world. Sometimes we're offered some quite unusual looking food that we've never eaten or seen before. Often it turns out to be delicious. But there's only one way to find out, to taste and see. David says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. That is what I experienced as I began to follow Jesus ever since. It's been my desire to get that message out to as many people as I can and to say to them, join me in spreading the news. Together, let's get the word out. Like David, praise God for all the favor your relationship with God has brought to your life. Praise God at all times, not just when things are going well or it's convenient to do so. I bless God every chance I get. My lungs expand with his praise. I live and breathe God. If things aren't going well, hear this and be happy. Praise God for first answered prayer. David writes, I sought the Lord and he answered me. God helped him in times of trouble. When I was desperate, I called out and God got me out of a tight spot. Second, freedom from fear. David continues by explaining exactly how God had answered his prayers in this instance. He delivered me from all my fears. Those who fear God are delivered from all their fears. Fear of the Lord is the equivalent of seeking the Lord. David does not say that we will lack nothing, but he does say those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Or as the message puts it, worship opens doors to all his goodness. Third, radiant faces. One of the things I noticed even before I was a Christian was the radiant expression on the faces of many Christians. Those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. Fourth, angelic protection. God's angel sets up a circle of protection around us while we pray. It's an amazing thought that as you pray and worship God, you experience angelic protection. All enjoyment spontaneously overflows with praise, wrote C.S. Lewis. Delight is incomplete till it is expressed. Lord, thank you that you promised to deliver me from all my fears. Thank you that your angel 
sets up a circle of protection around me as I pray. Lord, I thank, praise and worship you today. New Testament from Luke 1 When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you'll bear. But why am I so favoured that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leapt for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfil his promises to her. And Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. Believe God's promises of favour. Mary was highly favoured. The angel said to her, You have found favour with God. This passage is full of celebration, as Elizabeth and Mary recognise the ways in which God has favoured them. Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, sings to Mary, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favoured that the mother of my Lord should come to me? Blessed is she who has believed what the Lord has said to her will be accomplished. The emphasis on Mary's faith is significant, as many people would have responded very differently to the situation. God's favour did not mean that all Mary's problems disappeared. She was pregnant and unmarried in a culture where that would have caused all kinds of difficulties. Yet, she chooses to recognise the ways that God has blessed her. She picks up on Elizabeth's greeting and sings the song that has become known as the Magnificat. In it, she rejoices in God my Saviour for all the ways in which he has done great things for me. In some ways, the favour on Mary is unique. Blessed are you among women. Mary is first the mother of the Lord. Mary carried in her womb the Son of God, Jesus, the Blessed One. When Elizabeth comes into the presence of the fetal Jesus, she's filled with the Holy Spirit. Joy is the characteristic response to Jesus. Even the baby leapt with joy in the womb. Second, recognize for all future generations. From now on, all generations will call me blessed. Mary has been known as the Blessed Virgin Mary ever since. Jesus' DNA came from a combination of Mary and the Holy Spirit. He was the genetic son of Mary. He must have looked like her. He must have had some of her physical features. She brought him up. She trained and taught him. For 30 years, she was the dominant female influence on his life. Third pinnacle of faith. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord will fulfill his promises to her. Mary believed that what the Lord said to her something unique and humanly impossible would happen. As the angel had said to Mary, nothing is impossible with God. For Mary, what God had promised was as good as done. For the Mighty One has done great things for me. Corrie ten Boom said, Faith sees the invisible, believes the unbelievable, and receives the impossible. Of course, in many ways, Mary was unique. Yet, in some ways... The favour she talks about can apply to you and me. You are blessed by a saviour, God my saviour. The promise to fill the hungry with good things, the promise of God's favour to satisfy your spiritual hunger and his provision applies to you and me. Lord, thank you for Mary's extraordinary faith that she believed you could do what was humanly impossible. Like Mary, I want your favour to lead me to worship you. Old Testament from Numbers 2 and 3 This is the account of the family of Aaron and Moses at the time the Lord spoke to Moses at Mount Sinai. The Lord said to Moses, Bring the tribe of Levi and present to them Aaron, the priest, to assist him. They are to perform duties for him and for the whole community at the tent of meeting by doing the work of the tabernacle. Give the Levites to Aaron and his sons. They are the Israelites who are to be given wholly to him. Appoint Aaron and his sons to serve as priests. Anyone else who approaches the sanctuary is to be put to death. Experience now 
the favour of God's presence. These events took place at the time the Lord talked with Moses. What was once a special favour for Moses is now open to us all. You can experience the favour of God talking with you. Enormous care had to be taken because of the huge responsibility and great blessing of God's presence being in the midst of his people. The tent of meeting where God's presence dwelt was set out in the middle of the camps. Everyone was given a role and a responsibility. In particular, a certain group of people were ordained, the Levites, to full-time ministry. They were ordained to serve. They were wholly given to God. The life of God's people literally revolved around the presence of God. It was the key to their identity, their success, and their favor. But here we see that God's presence with his people was also limited. The people were barred from the sanctuary, the heart of God's presence. The extraordinary message of the New Testament is that this separation has now been removed. You can now experience the full favor of God's presence with you. This theme of the blessing of God's presence is a recurring one throughout the scriptures. Jesus brings God's presence to us. Jesus has given you the Holy Spirit, who is God's empowering presence dwelling within you. We experience God's presence, especially when we gather together. One day, you will know God's presence face to face. Lord, thank you so much for the blessing of your presence and your favor. As you did with Moses, please talk with me today. Pepper adds, Looking at Luke 1 verse 39, we see that it's good to have someone a little further on who journeys with us in life. God didn't leave Mary alone to carry this extraordinary revelation. He gave her Elizabeth. They must have been a great encouragement to each other, both pregnant in miraculous circumstances, knowing that their sons were coming into the world to achieve some astonishing mission from God and one of them was actually God. Before we pray today, why don't you write a list of where you've received God's favour and where you can see God working in your life today. Let's pray. Lord, thank you that you are always beside me. Thank you that you deliver me from all my fears. And Lord, I ask for the Holy Spirit to fill me with joy today. In Jesus' name, amen.